this, the main reason that you want to do this, the main reason I did this is for private labs. That is the ultimate. The ultimate is having your own player owned station. Now, this is fairly end game. Now, you're not going to be doing that starting out. You'd be lucky to have your own player owned station in six months, I would say, unless you're like a WoW player and you've got nothing else to do. Um, and EVE Online is your life, which I don't recommend. This is a this is a, a part-time game, and it should be a part-time game. Um, then you might be able to get there in two months, three months, because it requires, there's requirements are tough to get a station. It's not simply have the money. You can't buy your way into a player-owned station unless you buy a character. Uh, so let me show you mine. I'll just so I can kind of... Uh, glamorize it and then I will show you what should I do go to north I guess the North Pole and then I will show you um, the requirements after I show you what it looks like so there are uh, there are four because there are four races in the game there are four races of towers uh, that it, that does matter because each race of tower has different bonuses And I suppose I'm gonna have to talk about those it means I have to look them up because I don't remember everything So we're just moving in here now I'll close this down I'm at the very north pole of my tower Just because I wanted to show you it from far away. There's a player owned station if you go to any moon in 0.7 or lower space in high sec well uh, well anywhere really uh, but um, you're guaranteed if you're in high sec to find uh, a player owned station sitting there uh, player owned stations must can only be in 0.7 or lower space there can be no you cannot anchor it's called it's a skill for that too by the way you cannot anchor a player owned station in anything above 0.7. So no 0.8, no 0.9, and no 1.0 space will there be any player owned stations. Player owned stations are attached to moons, not planets. So uh, when you right click on the on space here and go to planets, go down to moons, and that will show you where the player owned stations are. Or that'll be where a player on station might be. So warp to moons if you if you want to go and peruse and look at people's player on stations. Okay, uh, so as I was saying, there are four races of player on stations. Let me show you mine up close just so you can see it. Okay, so there's mine. It's just that's what they look like. They're not dockable. These aren't. Um, there are what I think they're called outposts. I I don't think they're called outposts, but it, it's something like that. In null sec, which is zero sec, which is not a place you want to go if you're a newbie, um, you can build dockable stations, like giant stations, like I was just in. You can uh, big alliances build those things. Um, you can't do that in higher low sec. Higher low sec is these things. These are player owned stations, and stations is probably the wrong word to use, but that's what they're called. You can't dock in them. You can't store anything in them. They take fuel, but that's it. Uh, so that's a player-owned station. So let's get into them a bit now. So there's four races of stations. I have a Kald Kaldari station. Uh, there are also uh, Amar, Galente, and the other one, of course. Um, each type of station has different bonuses. And I'll show you mine first because it's sitting right here. If I can, I'm going to show info. Okay. Okay, so here's the bonuses for a Kaldari station. Missile battery rate of fire, velocity, and EM cycle speed. So if you have EM batteries, which I have one up, and I'll show you that a little bit later. They, they cycle, that meaning how many times they activate and attack somebody. 75% less speed, like they're quicker. So they nail people big time. That is Kaldari. How about Gal uh, Galente? Oh no. Here, just try medium. Here, just try control tower. Okay, here's Amar. Amar benefits are energy, sentry, optimal range. Yeah, yeah, silo cargo capacity. You can 
you can anchor storage bins that are called silos. That's for moon mining. Moon mining is low sec and, uh, and below only, not high sec. But you can mine moons. That's a whole nother video. I'm not even going to do a video on that because I've never done uh, moon mining. But look it up if you like. That's something that you can do in this game. That produces stuff for T2 components, by the way. Okay, here's Galente's bonuses. Hybrid sentry damage, that's a gun. Same with the, the MR was energy sentry. That's just a gun type of gun, right? Energy weapons, hybrid. Uh, there's also the, or what are the cannon, one, uh, cannon ones that are called? I can't remember now. So there's silo cargo capacity. They have even more, 100%. There's Mimitar. And so they have projectiles. So there's the other type of turret, projectile turret. So that's the artillery and the assault guns or whatever they're called. So they have uh, all kinds of weapon bonuses. Now, each uh, control tower also has uh, so much CPU and power grid, wherever that is. Must have missed it. They have power grid. Oh, here, power grid. So this is just like a ship. You anchor a module on the tower you're going to, it's going to cost you CPU and it's going to cost you power grid. Unless it's an artillery gun, it only costs you power grid. But anyways, modules have costs. They only have costs to online them though. You can anchor anything you like around a tower. Uh, but to online them, it's going to cost you the CPU or the power grid or whatever. Uh, okay, I think better wait here. I've missed some things. Uh, okay, so you can also have uh, pirate versions. So mine is a Dread Gurristus. Dread Gurristus, uh, or Gurristus is a pirate faction. You can get these on contract. They're rare drops from pirates out in low sec and, and null sec. And what that does is it reduces the fuel cost, or reduces the amount of fuel it uses. Or it, uh, yeah, I think that's it. In any case, it costs less fuel, so they're worth buying. If you have the mo extra money, you should always invest in a pirate tower. Now, there's two kinds of pirate towers. There's a Gurristus control tower, and then there's a Dread Gurristus. So the Dread Gurristus is more reduction of fuel, so you want to get that one. There's an equivalent one for the other races, so that's Kaldari. Kaldari's main pirate enemy is Gurristus. There's angels for the uh, for the uh, Mimitar, and uh, etc. Okay, the other two have their own pirates. There's also size of tower, they're small, medium, and large. They merely determine the amount of CPU and power grid you get, as well as, of course, the fuel cost, right? The bigger the tower, the more fuel it's gonna cost, but the more stuff you can online around it because it's got more uh, CPU and power grid. Uh, okay, so requirements to have a tower. Uh, requirements are, it's got, you gotta be in 0.7 or lower space, one tower per moon. You cannot anchor more than one tower around the same moon. So you got to find an open space. Good luck, by the way. Uh, you're going to have to go probably pretty far away from market hubs. Those will be all taken. Um, the other requirement is standing, and that's what's going to nail you. That's going to be the tough part. You're going to have to grind standing, which is like reputation. If you played WoW, reputation with a faction. You're going to have to grind 7.00 in the faction, not the corporation. You might be running missions right now for like Kaldari Navy, for example, and uh, cranking up the standing with that corporation fairly quickly. Yeah, you might, but you need 7.00 with the faction that owns the entire region. For I'm in the Citadel. That's Kaldari State. You see it right here. Um, if you're in the Forge, that's also Kodari State. You need 7.00 with them, and the only way you get reputation with a faction is you have to get storyline missions. That's how you get faction rep. I also think you can get a bit of faction rep from doing those special missions. Now I can't think of what they're called. Um, I'll find out, and I'll put a little dialogue thingy. If I don't, if I forget, just ask. But there's these, there's these little missions you can do off somewhere that have these specialty missions and there's like NPCs out in space and you talk to them and they give you little missions and I think that gives you a faction wrap a little bit. Okay, yes, yeah, so I talked about that. Okay, you also need a corporation. 
an individual cannot anchor a player on station player on stations are considered corporate assets you must be in a corporation so therefore your corporation must have the standing 7.00 when you first form a corporation I think it takes about a week for your individual standings to match your corporation that's why often in alliances you've got corporations that are lab only because the corporation standings are an average of all the all its members. I'm pretty sure that's still in the game. That hasn't that mechanic hasn't changed yet. Um, okay, so you need your own corporation, so that's another thing. Yeah. Also, I think you need anchoring skill, but I don't think I don't think it's that significant. So, but you do need the skill. I just don't know. You might need three or something. Okay. Uh, let's get into now the managing. So I'll get into the details of of this. So this is a little dialog box that would come up if you have a station. It tells you the name of it where it is owner that's my corporation there little mini corporation just me uh, status is online there's the shield strengths uh, and then there's the shield if so if you get attacked that'll be that'll reduce and it'll it regenerates obviously um, armor I don't know I think you can repair it yourself just like a ship I'm not sure about that there's the power and the CPU so I got the CPU maxed, and there's the power is a little bit left. So if I wanted to put a cannon up, I probably could, but I don't really need to. Okay, uh, the fuel used to be a whole bunch of components like mechanical parts and nitrogen is um, isotopes and all that. But they got rid of all that, believing that they were saving people's time uh, by making a another middleman. So rather than putting, rather than dumping whole bunch of mechanical parts in and, and uh, robotics and nitrogen isotopes now you take all those things and you build them into a block and then you move all the blocks out to your player on station and fill up your player on station with blocks so I suppose it's a little bit easier you don't have to look at all the items and see how much you have of each left but still you gotta collect them all and build these blocks so that's how you fuel it you also will need, if you're in high or low sec, I think maybe just high sec. I think it's both. I think it's high or low sec. Null sec, you don't need them. You need charters. And this is basically like payments to the state because they're protecting you, right? Um, so you need these charters as well. Uh, and they also are burned in, inside the uh, uh, control tower. The strontium things, uh, this is if you get attacked and your, uh, station, your station gets knocked down to 50% health it goes into reinforced mode for 24 hours reinforced mode uh, makes the tower invulnerable for 24 hours and it burns through your strontium one day of it and then after that one day it goes out of reinforced mode and it can be attacked and blown up uh, so in that time if for alliances for example if they're getting attacked and someone nukes or player on station down to half goes into reinforced mode You've got 24 hours to recoup and get your members together and launch a counterattack or protect the tower and all that kind of stuff. So that's the point of the strontium. If nothing happens after that or you fend off the attackers, your tower merely just regenerates itself and you can dump more strontium in it. Um, so, yes. Okay. So structures, you can put a whole bunch of stuff around it. Um, so these are our little shield thingies. I've got, uh, what are they called? Jammers. So that screws up the targeting of anybody attacking me. Um, and I've also got labs. So this is more important for the laboratorial. Uh, here are the labs, mobile labs. They have ME slots. Uh, I think it's one co copy slot. And PE slots and invention slots. The, the and there I think they're at 75 percent of the time so there's 25 percent reduction in the how long it takes to me stuff PE stuff etc so public slots they don't give you a reduction at all but in the mobile labs you get a 25 percent off the time it takes to me or PE or invent etc advanced mobile labs have no time slots I think they have one or two invention slots um, I think they have reduced ME as well. They might have one or two. 
but they've got three coffee slots each. So I've got three of those for nine. And then I've got one mobile lab in case I want to time stuff, do, uh, do PE research. And it's got one copy slot in it. The benefit also with advanced mobile labs is the copy slots reduce the time it takes by 35%. So they're even better for copy in terms of how long it takes.